Hey, I'm Yoshi on the go, and this is my iPhone A+, and this is my Canon Rebel T3i, and we're gonna do a little photo shootout. So far the iPhone has been quite a bit warmer than the Rebel counterpart, um, but they're both looking pretty dang good. Ooh, here's a delicious looking dead fox. That's always nice. The difference though is like when we get to portrait mode. As you can see right here with the Rebel, we've got that really nice f1.8 50 millimeter lens with natural blurred background and that's all in the lens, that, whereas now we see the iPhone portrait mode and actually it looks really, really good, except for those finer details. You can see we can zoom into the hair there a little bit and got some funky stuff going on. Another pretty big difference is the dynamic range, which the iPhone definitely has an advantage of. We saw this a little bit earlier, but it's either going to be focused on the shadows or focused on the highlights, and in this case, the highlights are blown out, whereas when we switch to the iPhone, it just naturally has a wider dynamic range, plus with the ability to take an instant HDR photo to bring those levels even closer together. I mean, this just looks far superior in my opinion. Also for your reference, here's just a regular iPhone photo without the portrait mode blur. One of the last tests I wanted to do was to see motion blur while we were driving. So we we're going about 20 miles an hour, and for this one, this is the Canon Rebel clicking as fast as I could, and I'm actually surprised it's kind of crappy, <laughs> especially when compared to the burst mode on the iPhone 8 Plus. Although the trees are all kind of look like they're leaning to the left a little bit, got that little jelly vision going on. Switching back to the Canon Rebel, I decided to try out sports mode, and actually that looks a lot better.
So this is the widest possible shot I can get with the kit lens on the Canon, but of course, panoramic mode on iPhone, you can go much, much further. And that brings us to our final destination here, the newly built LDS Temple in Cedar City. So most of the time, only the most devout LDS saints can enter the temple, but when it's first built, there's an open house for a few months before it's dedicated where anyone can come in and check it out. And I haven't had the opportunity to go inside yet, but I'd like to as soon as possible. So overall, I want to give the winner to the Canon Rebel. Uh, it has more megapixels, it's got the better lenses and interchangeable lenses. Um, it's just really superior in the, the photo department. Um, and now I didn't try this in the test, but when you zoom into the, the corners, the iPhone, most of the iPhone photos are kind of like blurry or out of focus, whereas the Canon photos are pretty consistent through and through. However, where the Canon doesn't do so good, and as we saw, is the dynamic range and the HDR capabilities that it doesn't have. And also like when we zoom in, we can see the Canon holds up a little bit better. We're working with 18 megapixels as opposed to 12 megapixels. Although to be fair, 12 megapixels, that's, that's not a bad number. Also the iPhone has the built-in 2X zoom lens, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can go up to 10X digital zoom, uh, which in a pinch works perfectly fine. However, where uh, the iPhone totally takes the cake with everything, not just the Canon, but literally every device as of 2017, is is the video department. Now maybe some of the $80,000, $100,000 cinema cameras obviously are gonna be a little bit more powerful than the iPhone, but for everything less than $3,000, the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and 10 are, are the best video cameras in the world right now in 2017, and that video is coming up soon. An extra special thanks to my friend Talon for being my photo model and also helping out with some other video projects, which you can watch right now. <laughs>